When you think of a man, what is he? Is he strong? Is he tough? Honorable? Honorable? Honorable. <laughs> you can get on him. He's honorable. <laughs> <laughs> Society's family unit is in crisis as less and less people are making the commitment of a lifelong partnership together. It has been normalized, encouraged, and easier than ever to just throw in the towel when the going gets tough. With time and a premium, start by spending 20 minutes per week gaining thought-provoking inspiration towards a journey of self-improvement, ultimately improving your marriage, your family, your health, and your home. Henry David Thoreau said, The mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. Today we will establish the role of a man regarding your home, your family, your community, etc. What does it mean to be a man in today's world? This discussion today will be centered around three things that men can do to define who they are and how to level up in their lives. Just a disclaimer, this episode is not just for the men, so ladies, don't tune out. We'll get into more specifics around some of the roles that a man makes in future episodes, but today's focus is on masculinity in a broader sense. In today's civilized consumer lifestyle, meaning we're in civilization, we aren't on farms, we don't necessarily need to hunt for our food, it's modern living, it's no wonder that some men have begun to lose their way or their purpose. John Eldridge is known for his quote, every man is looking for a battle to fight, an adventure to live, and a beauty to rescue. If you're a man and you're listening to this podcast, these are things that you need to hear. Some people are just on cruise control in their life and they don't have much of a vision for their future. What is your purpose and how are you going to get there? When you think of a man, what is he? Is he strong, tough, honorable? Is he courageous, heroic? Is he self-reliant, handy, and just competent in general? These probably aren't the images that you've seen on TV. Case in point, Homer Simpson, Tim the Toolman Taylor from Home Improvement, Peter Griffin from Family Guy, King of Queens, and so on. Dads are typically portrayed as a goof, overweight, clumsy, overconfident, etc. Men have become more disconnected with some of their traditional roles out in nature or working tough jobs or being hunters. A lot of modern jobs have us sitting in a cubicle or in front of a screen all day. This is not our natural state. And it's part of the reason that there's more obesity, anxiety, and depression, and just people rudderless in their life. We've lost some of that fire. I've seen studies that show that men's testosterone levels for men in their 30s is similar to that of a 70-year-old man. What does that say? And there could be many reasons for these rates dropping, uh, such as diet, lifestyle, our overall environment. We've seen a rise in allergies and all sorts of things that could be connected. While some some of this these changes could be good, some guys needed to soften their approach, be more collaborative. You don't always have to be a lone wolf. Be more involved with your kids. Mm-hmm. We need to be responsible, be more organized, be communicative. This can also go a bit too far in making guys passive and being consumers rather than producers. And I think that's what we're talking about when we overcorrect this a little bit. So what can we do about it? I We said that there are three main topics of being a man. So the three that seem to bubble up to the top as we were looking more into this was being a protector, and a provider. And I want to clarify too, we're talking about being a man, not a male. Yes, being a male means you have <laughs> male genitalia. Yes. Being, being a man means a lot more than that. And three main topics of being a man are being a protector, a provider, and a leader. Now this can take many forms. So being a protector isn't just physical protection. I think a lot of times, (laughs) a lot of times it is sure. If someone's breaking into the house, (laughs) you're going to throw your body in front of us, right? (laughs) (laughs) 
yeah, so there's the physical part, which is probably less so than maybe it was 100, 200 years ago. Uh, we're not, I'm not defending you against wild animals, um, and, you know, <laughs> things like that. So maybe in a metaphorical sense, but I think that your family is also looking to you to provide more than just physical strength or protection. You know, I even think of things of being more aware of, are the doors locked to the house before we leave? Or if we go to bed at night, I find myself doing that just as the protector of the family. Or if we and go it out... it takes one thing off of my mind. Right. And and so I, I think of even just little things of, if we go to a public place, I find mm-hmm. myself looking for the emergency exits just in case something were to happen. I think... You're not I, neurotic. N- no. It's not about, it's not about being, being more neurotic. Aware. It's being aware. Yeah. If, I, if I'm in a coming up to a stop and I pull up behind someone, you know, I don't want to get right on their tailgate. I want to leave enough space that if something happens, I can get around this car and we can make an escape. We can get out of here. Mm -hmm. It's not just physical fighting and physical protection. It's just being more aware. But physically speaking, yes, I want to be strong enough to lift something off of somebody if it fall, you know falls on them and maybe it's a house fire maybe it's a, a accident or something i want to be able to chase somebody down if i have to or be able to defend myself or my family in a physical environment if i have to i think there's a lot of people out there that wouldn't know what to do if physical violence came upon them they they don't think it's ever going to happen to them and they freeze they they don't know what to do this isn't like the movies mm-hmm. so distancing yourself from that so much to the point that you are helpless is not a good state to be in. And additionally, by you taking on that role of the protector, I have confidence in you. So if something happens and we're out somewhere and you say, do this or go there or blah, 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 I'm not going to question you mm-hmm. whatsoever because you're you're the protector. You know, in that instance, you're the authority. Some men would be flubber. What do we do, honey? What do we do? What do we do, yeah. honey? And stuff. And because they've let their wife run the reins all mm-hmm. the time. And we'll get more into that here in just a bit. But also on a lighter note, I think that I want to be physically strong to also be able to keep up with my kids. And <laughs> and our daughter, he, she likes looking up to her yeah. big, strong dad. If, if I was just fat and worthless and, you know, no energy, just... How many, Sitting I mean, there on the couch. I mean, that's even at, I mean, what does she weigh now? 60 pounds, 60 pounds, yeah. eight years old. She still wants to, you know, grab your leg and have you walk across the room, yeah. you know, or the, in the kitchen, they'll Gotta throw my hip out. Doing <laughs> in the kitchen, you know, you'll wrap your legs <laughs> around her and like swing her, you know, yeah. while you're on top of the counter or something, you know, I mean, and the mm. wrestling matches are just, <laughs> I mean, WWE or, so you know, wait till. Our son gets older. Oh, my Lord. Keeping us moving, men also need to be providers. You provide financially, too, but the job doesn't just stop there. You provide stability and consistency in your family's life. Be the rock or the foundation to build upon. I've certainly noticed there's a big push out there in society for men to show more of their emotions. Okay, that that's great to a point, but in our case, I know Allie and the kids certainly provide plenty of emotion at times and oh i'm emotional get, for get the a little uh, is that what you're trying to say nicely <laughs> <laughs> but i don't take offense to that but that's okay i think as well it's just that i need to be relied upon to sort of be the anchor in the stormy seas to be an analogy but i i guess it's not that i don't show emotion because because that's that's not good either. But I think it's it's good to have someone who's going to be level headed in turbulent times. If something bad happens, you've got to be the rational one. Mm-hmm. And typically, when things go bad, we look to we look to the man. Hey, what are you going to do about this? And you need to be prepared. What's your plan? What are you going to do? Now you don't have all the answers. This isn't a James Bond movie, but <clears throat> you need to have a level head and keep your cool that can go bad really quick if everybody's emotional in a in a bad spot you're the one who provides guidance and who provides you know rationale and stuff i i could probably count on one hand the number of times i've seen you cry in life i don't think cadence ever has Mm -hmm. you know but that to me is like okay like this is actually really serious like this is Mm -hmm. really affecting you 
And this doesn't mean bottle it up. That that's yeah, bad no, 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 too. Yeah, not at all. Ben is very very good at speaking his mind and getting out what needs to be said and stuff. But it doesn't mean that he's like crying every time he does it. And it and no. on the other spectrum of that, it doesn't mean that you're punching walls and throwing things no. either. There's that type of emotion as well. You need to provide a level head, Mm -hmm. you know, of rationale and stuff like that. And that's, that's what I want in a man. Two of the times were when our children was born. I will say. Right. (laughs) Which is nice. If you don't cry when your children are born. Yeah, that's that's pretty cold. (laughs) Um, Certainly think that it's good for men to be thinking about this too. Because if you know your vision, you know your purpose and your mission in life, you can be your own point of origin and have strong principles. These things will help guide you when things go up and down like a roller coaster. Um, and 2020 was a great example of those types of things happening. And I've um, also heard the quote, and I think it's interesting. I'm probably going to butcher this. It's better to be a, a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. It's just something that stuck with me for a while, and I can't really explain all the reasons why, but... That's that's something that speaks to me as a man, that it, it would be much better to be one than the other. So essentially, as a man, you should be a leader in your home and for your family and also for your community. Your manliness does not stop at your front door or when you're not with your family. You need to be emotionally strong and stable for yourself and for them and be a father to your kids. You don't babysit yeah. them. And you don't help your wife with them. You're just raising them too. That's like one of my biggest pet peeves. Same thing with the house. You are helping run your house. You're not just helping your wife do things. This isn't her show and you're just her assistant running around doing what you're told. Yeah. You're helping raise your kids. You're helping run your house. Dads might not be as nurturing. They want to catch you before you fall, but they pick you up, they brush you off, and they let you try again. So they want to keep you from making mistakes, but let you find your own way, even though his heart breaks as well. A dad holds you when you cry, scolds you when you break the rules, shines with pride when you succeed, and has faith in you even when you fail. I think a lot of these things are parallel to how a mother feels as well. Mm -hmm. We just are obviously Mm -hmm. a lot more physically emotional and nurturing about it versus men, you know, tend to be tough love, which is where that balance comes in, in a marriage between a man and a woman. That's the, that's the balance that they have. You know, why do you think when Brayden falls, he says, mama, and every other time when he wants to be silly, he says, dada. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, it starts at 10 months old. Um, guys, you need to lead your wife as well. I did not say dominate. Okay, and I know that this skepticism has come up even in Ben and I's marriage that Ben is dominating over me and what I do. That is in no way, shape, or form what is going on here. My decision to leave my job was a collaborative effort between the two of us. Our decision to buy this home was a collaborative effort between the two of us. You selling your car. Me selling my car was a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. I was in no way, shape, or form forced to sell my vehicle and we could still afford it right now if we wanted to. (laughs) So, so guys make some decisions and make sure that things are getting done. Don't just do what you're told. There's a lot of men out there afraid to get in trouble with their wives. I hate that saying, um, happy wife, happy life. We've both come to absolutely hate that. Like you didn't really think about it before, but over time it, it can get a little destructive in a way and I, that may seem sensational but yeah. if you're always walking on eggshells you aren't confident enough to actually get stuff done how about happy house happy spouse there you go or something like that some guys just seem like they check out and they just want to go sit on their butt and watch a show play video games peruse social media so part of this is also if i can step in is also guys don't be afraid to be a guy but also don't take it too far and you don't need to ask for permission to do everything but you need to collaborate and that's what we do we don't make decisions in a vacuum that this affects the whole family this is more than just about one person don't just be a spectator in your own life Mm -hmm. take some initiative 
If you can't tell, Ben and I are pretty passionate about this subject. I believe that men need to be confident at work. Since Ben has worked from home, I have seen that like full force. Like quite honestly, before with him going to the office and traveling every few weeks and stuff, I didn't know what he did. Something with berries. But (laughs) since I've been able to actually sit in down here in the office and listen to you and see something that you do, like I'm like, holy crap, you're like really smart. I can't do this stuff. (laughs) <laughs> the stuff that you do. So right. men need to be confident at work. When I hear Ben talk to his colleagues at work, it's it's honestly the same way that he talks to me. He's confident. He knows what he's talking about. He's assertive in his tribe, you know, with our friends and everything and our community. He's not passive. He's not a doormat to friends and family. You know, he will tell them what he what he means, you know, not being a dick about it. He's a smart guy. It's sexy. Let's just say that little word there. That you're a confident man. You want a guy that's going to take charge and not be passive and just escape, run away, and he's he's looking at video games or he's hiding in shows and TV or watching porn instead of spending time with his wife. Yeah. Um, and just in general trying to always like get away i guess from his hide life because maybe kids, hide from yeah. his family it sounds like a it sounds like a big lecture right now but yeah. this is just something we've it noticed needs to be i i it would I, I, I agree i'm passionate about the men in today's society like holy crap if this is what the guys today are like what is our son gonna be living with in 20 years or so like come on and this, this leads me into a fallacy that we have currently that we're all equal. Mm-hmm. And Allie and I are not complete equals. We are equal in general. We take equal parts in running our family, running our household. Raising our kids. Raising our kids. But we're not equal in every single way. And this is why you, you kind of lose that spark in your marriage after a while. Mm-hmm. Because we have to balance things out. You have to lead with the kids and the cooking and certain things to run the house. I have to lead as the breadwinner, okay? And making certain decisions for the house in general. Some of the bigger things is what I'm talking about. But this doesn't mean better or worse, anything like that. And there's certainly been times in our past that I've just let Allie make the majority of the decisions and then I just take her lead and and follow her and support her. And that can be okay at times. But was I doing that too much? Was that putting a lot of pressure on her? And then I wondered why she didn't have anything left at the end of the night. So take a more active role in making some decisions. Follow up. Take some pride in your house. Your house is your castle. Do what you say you're going to do. Take some pride in that. Take some ownership. I'm going to get into some numbers here, and I have some other books and resources to offer. But this may provide a little bit more hard insight into some of the struggles that we've seen men going through specifically, some stats that may certainly raise your eyebrows and make you think about the future for your your kids. 73% of suicides are men. 60% of the homeless are men. 79% of homicide victims are men. 92% of workplace deaths are men. 93% of prison inmates are men. Men are dropping out of college and high school at alarming rates as well. They're dropping out of the corporate world. They're not voting as much. They're sort of just checking out. Going on to more of the kids' stats, 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. 90% of homeless and runaways are from fatherless homes. 85% of children who show behavior disorders come from fatherless homes. Children that grow up without fathers are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crimes, nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in prison. I grew up without a strong father figure in my life, and I look around and the world needs dads, good, strong, virtuous leaders, someone to look up to, pass on knowledge, have rites of of passage as we grow up. I didn't have that in my life. So where did I look for a masculine figure? Well, I looked at movies. I looked at the internet, TV shows, and so on. And that can be very unhealthy. Earlier, we listed three things that can help define what a man's role is in society at large. 
Our challenge this week is to find three ways you can step into this role more effectively. Some examples, coach a local group of kids, join a gym, or find a physical activity like softball, bowling, etc. Train for a 5K or a marathon. Get out of debt and figure out how to provide more financially. Build your tribe by helping your neighbors. Plan some date nights with your wife. We hope that by focusing on this call to order and actually putting some of these recommendations into action, that you will start working towards a journey of self-improvement and go into 2021 with a brighter outlook on masculinity in your home life. If you're ready for your marriage and family dynamic to thrive and not just survive, all it takes is 20 minutes or less joining us each week. It begins with a journey of self-improvement while you sit in the carpool lane, commute to work, squeeze in a workout, or get halfway through folding that laundry pile. Be sure to check out the blog at thefamilyorder.com and follow us on Facebook at The Family Order. If you're ready to start your journey, be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss new episodes every Monday.